What's up guys? So Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End is the third review in my Pirates of the Caribbean series of reviews leading up to the fifth installment, Dead Men Tell No Tales, which opens on my birthday at the end of the month. I'm very excited and here I'm to talk about at World's End. This video will be filled with spoilers. You know, the movie's been out for about a decade now, so if you hadn't seen it, you should probably go and watch it and then watch this video. Or if you don't care about the series, then I don't know why you really clicked on this anyway. But let's get straight into it. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End is the final film in the series to be direct directed by Gore Verbinski. This again stars Johnny Depp, Orlando Bloom, Kira Knightley, Jeffrey Rush, Bill Nye, Stellan Skarsgård, introducing Chow Young Fat as uh, Sal Fang, and this film takes place pretty much immediately after the second film. We're on a quest to find Jack Sparrow. You know, he's been eaten by the Kraken, so now we have to go to the world's end, pretty much, to save him. And as all this is going on, you know, Lord Cutler Beckett is wanting to, he's wanting to take over the seas, he's wanting to, to, to rule, he's wanting to take down all pirates, and, uh, you know, it's, it's not looking good for our band of heroes. So, what we have to do is Barbosa has this, this, this piece of eight, this coin, and that's this new plot that's introduced into this movie, is we need to go to the Brethren Court with all the pirate kings, so they'll all band together to, uh, to fight Beckett and, and, and the East India Trading Company, pretty much. And that's pretty much the basic plot of the film. There is a lot of other things that happen in this movie. Like, this movie never stops. For me, anyway, this movie never stops from beginning to end. There's always something happening. There's always someone turning on someone else or, or something like that happening, and I think it's fantastic. Personally, for me, at World's End is my favorite film in the Pirates series. Uh, I, I might be in the minority when I uh, say that, but this movie is one of my favorites in the in the pirate series. It is my favorite. It is my favorite because this movie did something different from what the first two films did. The first two films were very fun action adventure films, and uh, this movie is that, but it's more epic than anything this film is. You know, just the the way that the the score you know, transitions from scene to scene and, and just the sweeping shots of everything, this movie is the definition of an epic film. You know, I absolutely, I do, I love this movie. Like, this is an epic movie from beginning to end, like I said. You know, like, the first two films are very fun. They're not as epic, but they're very fun, kind of silly. This movie is that at the same time, but it's also, like, this really epic journey that I fell in love with the first time seeing it in the theater I couldn't get enough of it and this is the longest Pirates film this movie is what two hours and 48 minutes with end credits without its 238 so it is a very long movie but like I said for me it never stops because I'm so invested in the characters the movie starts out with a hanging you know uh, they're hanging all these these people that are you know committed of of pirates or anything you know it's 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 pretty scary and I could understand why that could have turned some people off right at the first scene of the movie you got people hanging including a, a, a young boy you know what I mean but I think it sets the tone of what the movie's going to be it's this darker story and you know it's that's what happens you know in life in general darkness takes over and you know you have to find these people that, that could take you know it could fix the situation and that's you know Barbosa and 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 Will and Elizabeth you know like I said they have to find Jack Sparrow they have to go to Davy Jones locker to save him and that's the whole first like 30 minutes of the movie you know what I mean we don't even get to see Jack until like 32 minutes into the film or something like that and I and a lot of people say you know these movies they they uh, they put Jack Sparrow in the forefront and uh, that that's not how it should be he should be more of a supporting than anything like the movie has him at the lead but the other characters should be more prominent you get what I'm saying uh, and I think that's something that on Stranger Tides failed at because uh, Jack Sparrow's is the lead you know you don't really have anybody to lean back on in that movie I'll get to that review next Friday but here. I think that was a fine decision to say let's not put Jack in the movie until like 30 minutes in. And then when we find him, you know, we see he's kind of hallucinating, you know, he's, he's seeing several versions of himself because he's on Davy Jones' locker. You know, they escape, there's a fantastic sequence, this up is down sequence where they have to flip the boat upside down so they get back onto the, the uh, real 
world area not the world's end but the regular you know kind of area which is fantastic that is like the first hour of the movie just saving jack and getting back into the you know where everything is happening and i thought that that was very good and then the next hour of the movie it's like okay we need to really get serious about you know getting to the brethren court and uh you know meeting with them and there's this whole thing about Calypso, which is introduced into this movie as well, which could have had a lot of people confused. But I don't think it's that confusing. You know, Calypso is Tia Dama. She was bound in her bones. Uh, Davy Jones helped the Brethren Court uh, bind Calypso and, or Tia Dama or whatever you want to call her. And, you know, Tia Dama and Davy Jones were in love with each other. They both have the same locket which I thought was very nice. And there's a scene between them, between Tia Dama and Davy Jones, which I think works really well. You know, if we see Davy Jones is actually a man. She places her hand on his chest and he turns into a human. And I really love that. You know what I mean? Norrington has his moment in this film. You know, he's, he's working with the East India Trading Company now. He's, uh, he's not all washed up like he was in the last movie, but he realizes maybe this is not the right thing to do, so he pretty much sacrifices himself to save Elizabeth because she was captured, uh, not really captured, but she was taken on to Sal Fang's ship uh, because Sal Fang thought she was Calypso because Barbosa said, oh, we have Calypso. So he's like, oh, give me the girl. During that fantastic scene uh, with, uh, you know, Beckett and Jack Sparrow talking, you know, in, uh, in uh, Beckett's kind of court, uh, his quarters, you know what I mean? It's that fantastic scene where they're throwing each other the compass back and forth and Beckett's trying to get information from Jack. It's, it's really great stuff, and the action in this movie is phenomenal. It's just like the action in the first two films. Every time there's an action scene in this film, Gore Verbinski does a fantastic job bringing the action to the screen and making us invested into what we're watching because there is a story to tell during all this action, especially until we get to the end of the film where, you know, we finally get to the Brethren Court... Elizabeth Swan is named the new Pirate King because, you know, Sal Fang died. She had to take his place, and there was a vote to, you know, who's going to be the king? Who's going to lead us? What are we going to do? Elizabeth says, you know, prepare every vessel that floats. Tomorrow at dawn, we're at war, or something along those lines. And then it's a fantastic line where this guy gets up, uh, and he's like, And so, we shall go to war! And Jack just kind of looks at him. His reaction shot is just like, you know, it's hilarious. It's one of my favorite parts of the whole entire film. I just love that character. Jack Sparrow is such a fantastic character. Johnny Depp does a fantastic job bringing him to life. And I think he was used wonderfully in this movie. I think every character is used wonderfully in this movie. Every character has the, the spotlight, sh you know, shined on them. And it, it's like, what are they going to do in these circumstances? When really, Will Turner's story of the film is he just wants to save his father from the Flying Dutchman, from Davy Jones' ship, and he's really willing to do anything he has to do to save his father, which is ultimately, like, pretty much betray the Black Pearl and Jack and everybody on that ship, because that's what he was on the voyage for. Uh, in the first place. He didn't really go to save Jack. He went because he needed a ship to save his father, and he felt as though the Black Pearl, you know, that's how he's going to do it. And uh, things don't really go his way, uh, necessarily, because at the end of the film, when there's this big maelstrom in Calypso, she's, she's been released, and there's this big uh, whirlpool in the middle of the ocean, and the Dutchman and the Black Pearl have a phenomenal battle on the ocean. The CGI in this movie is so seamless, it's phenomenal. The CGI in the second movie was an Oscar-winning CG. This is nominated for uh, Best Visual Effects. It didn't win, but it is phenomenal CGI. It blends in the sound design as well. The sound design is fantastic in this film. Like when they're in Singapore, or Singapore and everything, or just the, the whole entire film, the sound design is fantastic. Like, I, I love the sound design to all these movies, actually. You know, I love getting into this world. It's really fantastic. And that last action sequence with the Maelstrom and Jack finally having a confrontation with Davy Jones, and we've been waiting for this for two films, and they finally have this fantastic confrontation, and then down on the on the Black Pearl, Will and Elizabeth are fighting, and, you know, they've had their differences throughout the film, but it's, it's finally just like, you know what, I want to marry you, you know, I love you, let's, let's stop being crazy and let's just get married while everybody's fighting she says i don't think now's the best time or something like that and uh they decide to get married and barbosa 
marries the two. It is phenomenal because she's like, Barbosa, marry us. And there's that wonderful shot of him turning his head and saying, I'm a little busy at the moment. You know, it's, it's fantastic stuff. You know, I love all these characters to death, and I, I hope to see more of them in this new movie because we know in the fourth film there wasn't really many of the uh, original cast. You know, they kind of with, with those, which is why I don't think that movie really worked. But like I said, we're talking about this movie here, which I love. I love the epicness to it. And before I forget, Hans Zimmer's score to this movie is one of my favorite film scores of all time. It is beautiful music. It's fantastic music. The up is down theme. Da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, you know, it's fantastic stuff. You know, he, I think I heard somewhere that he made over four hours of music for this movie or something, over three hours of music or something, and it, it all is very original, and it works with the film, like all the Singapore music, the, the music of, the you know, the hoist, the colors theme, and I love uh, the usage of that in Singapore when there's the fight in Singapore and then all of a sudden you know, everybody's fighting and the music cuts to it's like dum you know it's fantastic stuff and the way that the story ends you know the way that they tie the trilogy to a close is ultimately will is the one that stabs the heart you know because you know davy jones pretty much kills will he stabs him so Jax has the heart in his hand, he's just like, you know what, I'm going to let you stab it, I'm going to put it on the ground, and I'm going to help you, because they both kind of do it, you know, which is nice, but he kind of helps Will stab the heart, which I thought was fantastic. So his father is ultimately the one, Will's father, is ultimately the one that slices Will's heart out of his chest and puts it into the, in, into the chest, you know what I mean? I, I thought it was really fantastic stuff. And, uh, you know, when Beckett ultimately dies, the Flying Dutchman rises out of the water we realize that everybody's still alive and their curse has kind of been broken they're not really fish people anymore but will now has to be the captain of the dutchman uh his he is bound to the ship and i thought that it was kind of really tragic this tragic love story between will and elizabeth you know they just get married and now they really can't even see each other because of the way the things turned out you know i love it that they didn't sugarcoat it i love that they didn't sugarcoat it the film ends in a way to where they still love each other, but they're not going to be able to see each other that much because of, of what's happened. And I, I, I just, I love they didn't sugarcoat the end of this movie. And uh, the last scene with the two on the beach with uh, Hans Zimmer's music playing, it's all great stuff. And the film ends, you know, Jack and, uh, Jack and uh, Gibbs, you know, do their little thing, you know, uh, what does he say? Take what you can, give nothing back, or, or something like that. And uh, it's it's great. Barbosa steals the Black Pearl one last time, and, uh, you know, they're looking for the Fountain of Youth, and he opens the map, and uh, there's a big hole in it, and he's just like, ah, oh, Sparrow, you know what I mean? Jack stole, he stole the middle of the map. He has the map now, which I thought was really nice. So now he's, I guess looking for the Fountain of Youth too. That's the next mission. That's what they kind of set up at the end of this film, and uh, it ends. You know, Jack's on his little dinghy, and, and they're and they're off. And I love this movie. I think this is an epic film. I think it's it's a wonderfully paced film. I think everybody does a great job. I you know I guess I can understand if you have issues with this movie, but for me it's epic and it's great. And I love it. I love this movie. I'm going to give it the same rating I gave the first two. Four and a half out of five stars. I don't think it's a perfect film. You know, some things aren't explained, like at the beginning, towards the beginning of the movie, where Beckett has the chest, and he has the heart, too. But at the end of Dead Man's Chest, Davy Jones had the chest on his ship, and Beckett only had the heart in that bag. So I don't really know what happened there. You know, some things that don't really add up. But other than those tiny little nitpicks, this is a pretty great movie, in my opinion. And I can't wait to see some of these characters return in the fifth film. We'll have to see what happens, because movie five pretty much is going to go off of this. I, I don't think they're really paying attention to the fourth movie. It's, it's going off of the end of this film, which I really love and I can't wait. Like I said in my uh, Dead Man's Chest review, I did grow up with these movies. You know, I saw this film in the theater for my 
for my 10th birthday. Yeah, I remember going with a bunch of friends and, and we went to, for my birthday and it was it was fantastic and I have great memories with this movie. Uh, but guys, comment your thoughts in the comment section. What do you think about Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End? Are you excited for Dead Man Tell No Tales? Uh, what do you think? Comment that in the comment section. Also, you can subscribe for the, to this channel because, like I said, this uh, next Friday, a week today, I'll be posting my review for Honest Stranger Tides. And the following Friday, my review for Dead Men Tell No Tales will go up. And then probably the Sunday after that, my spoiler review for the film will go up as well. Uh, guys, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links to those are in the description of this video. You can also follow me on Snapchat at RankingSemity2 72 and on Instagram at KingArises131. And you could also like this video. I hear a lot of videos, people saying to smash the like button or, or something like that. I'm not going to tell you to smash the like button because that wouldn't be original of me. I'll just tell you to fondle it or something. If you had fondle the like button or, or just do something with it, you know, get freaky with it. Uh, but do what you got to do. Guys, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching my review for Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Over and out.